Hi gorgeous, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ara and today I'm gonna to be using a couple new products, a comparison between two of my favorite finishing powders, the Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte that I just picked up and the Chanel Less Beiges. This one I bought at the beginning of the year, this one I just bought. And my little scientific brain wanted to compare the two. So here we are. I also have the new Fenty Beauty. This is the Suede Powder Blush. I picked up one shade as an experiment for myself. Bacon cakes. I had to test this out and see how it works on fair skin. Recently, I picked up the Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Finishing Powder. And if you watched my first impressions of this, you know I fell head over heels in love with this and I was having the time of my life. This powder has just swept me off my feet and I have been looking for reasons to pull it out and use it. But earlier this year, I bought the Chanel Les Beiges Healthy Glow Finishing Powder, and this was my go-to for soft matte finishing powders. I have had this on my mind nonstop since I bought the Tom Ford and fell in love with it because I don't remember falling in love with the Chanel the same way. So today I'm doing a comparison. On the right side of my face, I have Chanel. On the left side of my face, I have Tom Ford. And I had to see, are they worth the vastly different prices? But then as a side note, I needed to test it on top of the Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte. They haven't been on my face that long, so I can't tell you how they're wearing overall. I'm gonna have to get back to you in the comments at the end of my day. But so far, as a dry skin girl, they're looking beautiful and it's playing very well on top of the Soft Matte Architecture Foundation. But then I also picked up the new Fenty Beauty Suede Blush, or at least I think it's Suede Powder Blush. This thing feels like silk. It's so thin and slippery between my fingers. I picked up one shade as an experiment because this is the shade that was advertised for Fair Skin, 01 Bacon Cakes, and I thought there's no way this is gonna work for me. So I'm gonna be putting this one to the test for you as well. The eye makeup is from Glaminatrix, Barely Basic. That will be in a separate video. If you're enjoying today's video at any point, don't forget to give this video a like to help that algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so so that you know every time that I upload. My pasty self definitely needs to shade down again. <laughs> this was on sale at Nordstrom. This is the Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte. I was thinking maybe I'll go ahead and buy 0.4, which I believe is just rose. But then I was like, yeah, I don't need to spend the money and it's getting cooler outside. Yesterday for me, it was in the high 80s, low 60s here in Ohio. I just, I'm gonna wear a sweater. I'm gonna hide my arms and we're gonna just use the shade that I have because there's no reason to be wasteful. I'm gonna pick it up from the back of my hand here and then blend it in the best I can. I mean, it wasn't too far off when I bought it, but whatever. Just gonna make sure I bring it down my neck and around my ears so it blends in quite a bit better and it's less noticeable that it's a touch too dark. I might even need to grab my sponge. Just gonna make my blending a little bit easier for myself. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that excess foundation on my Sephora sponge before I conceal. This is the new Fenty Beauty Suede Powder Blush. I have mine in the shade number one, Bacon Cakes. I thought from the promo pictures this would be great for fair skin. However, I do wanna show you a close up. It does not look as though that is gonna be good for fair skin. I haven't used any contour or bronzer or highlight. All I've done is put my base on. I want to use this first because it's so deep looking in the pan. I genuinely do not believe it's going to work for me. Oh, it picked up so much on the first dip. I'm worried it's going to be too neutral but too deep at the same time. Okay, hold on here. Let's share a little bit of the love to that right cheek. I feel like Petal Poppin probably would have been a better shade for me. It's a bit intimidating in the pan. It just looks so, so brown. 
on the cheek, it looks like it's got a subtle pink undertone to it. It didn't even look like that in the swatches. In the swatches, it looked pretty light. And I don't normally do my blush before bronzer or contour or anything like that, but I really was genuinely worried this would not work for me, but it's looking like it is. It's looking so beautiful on the cheek, and I was so worried when I opened it that it would not, but surprisingly, it's not blending out on my cheek super heavy and deep like it looks in the pan. Am I crazy? Does that not look really deep as opposed to how it's looking on my cheek? And I know blush is always gonna look different diffused on your cheek. They're not meant to be opaque like a shadow on your eye, but it just looks a little deceiving. I built it up with a more dense brush. I wasn't really sure if I should use that or not, but I took a chance. This thing looks very soft. The formula feels nice. It feels really light on my finger. It doesn't feel thick. It's a very soft formula. I like it. Other than my lips and my eyes being finished, everything else is. I want to compare the new Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Powder that I have completely fallen in love with to the Chanel Les Beiges Powder. This one I bought earlier this year. It was also a reformulation and I believe this one is talc free as well. I have mine in the shade B10. This one has gotten a lot of love and use from me. I don't think off first use when I did use the Tom Ford powder that it was the same as this one from Chanel. I'm going to be using this one on my right cheek and then the Tom Ford on my left cheek. This one I just kind of got blown away with. It is also talc free. It's so soft and airbrushed and just silky smooth on my skin. I love it. I'm going to take this hourglass double sided brush. I'm going to use the smaller one here. And I'm going to pick it up and just kind of place it right in the center of my face. It's most, mostly where I need the brightening to begin with. I don't think it's a very brightening powder. It feels more like just a silky soft finishing powder and a touch up powder. But I definitely think it's kind of helping brighten my complexion a bit, which I'm not mad about because foundation is just a touch too deep so it's looking beautiful and then I'm gonna use this on my forehead on the left side here trying to avoid that right side as much as possible and then I'm gonna flip over that brush and I'm gonna use this just a small amount to kind of buff all of that blush and highlight and bronzer together so much better and I get carried away with this powder, so I have to be careful. I'm going to do the same thing here on my right cheek. I've cleaned off this brush the best I can. And I don't think this one is the same as the Tom Ford. It's not giving me that similar brightening effect, which is okay. And i got to clean up my eyes here when I finish my eye makeup. It, that little coal liner is bleeding all over my lower lid. But this one, it still gives me that same blurred, soft, smooth effect, which is beautiful. But for some reason, the Tom Ford one just feels so much softer. I could be crazy. It could all be in my head. And if anything, I'll find out at the end of the day as they wear off and report back. You tell me on first glance, what do you think? Does the right side of my face look more diffused, more put together, more airbrushed, or does the left side of my face? And I genuinely think the left side still looks better. The Chanel is still a little bit deeper, but it's translucent. I wish that it went a touch lighter. It just doesn't. The Tom Ford still looks like it's a a little bit brighter on my skin. It's so beautiful on both sides though. Either one of these is just beautiful. Like I couldn't tell when I had this one, it didn't look bad at all. It was so beautiful when I've used it. I don't know. I finished my eyes off with my Lisa Eldridge black pencil. 
a pair of Kiss New Natural Lashes in the Style High Bun. I'm almost out of these. I'm going to have to buy a backup. And my lipstick is the Fenty Beauty Traced Out Lip Pencil in the shade The MVP and Tom Ford Scarlet Shock. For $28, this blush surprised me. The formulation is so soft and so luxurious. It feels so thin and slippery on my fingers. I picked up one shade and I picked up the lightest shade for an experiment. I was like, there's no way this shade is for fair skin. No way it's gonna work on my skin. It's not going to look flattering on me and it doesn't look like the promo photos. I was just for sure going into this with, with an experimental mindset. Surprisingly, this worked so well on my skin tone. It has a soft, rosy undertone to it. Granted, my foundation is just a touch too deep for me, but on my finger, like it doesn't even look like it has that soft undertone to it. It just looks like it does in the pan. I'm so surprised by how flattering it is on my cheeks. I did buff it down a little bit because it was a little bit crazy, but I'm actually overwhelmed and the price point is great. So for four grams of product, 12 month shelf life, I'm not gonna complain at $28. This doesn't scream luxury to me, but it also feels luxurious. The packaging is very, very cute. It's unique, it stands out. It's gonna be kind of a pain in my butt to store it, but I like it. I don't know, I'm happily surprised and I think I need to get one more shade. Petal Poppin, I have that one in the, the cream formulation. I think that would be just as beautiful in this slippery, luxurious light like silk between my fingers, feels like silk. But I love how it looks on my cheeks. It's very natural looking, very flattering for fair skin. So if you were thinking this is not gonna work for fair skin, it actually does. And now the comparison that I just had to do for me, this is a, Battle of the finishing powders, if you will. Tom Ford is $95. For $95, you're getting a 12 month shelf life, nine grams of product. Chanel is $60. And for $60, you're getting 18 months of shelf life for 12 grams of product. Three grams more, six months longer. The biggest and noticeable difference for me, at least between these two finishing powders, because they've been on my face for quite a while now, I've been up for a couple hours, my, gu my guys, my kids woke up, I've already fed my baby. The biggest difference for me is just that these powders are slightly different in shade. The Tom Ford gave me a softer, brighter look. I don't think it's meant for a brightening powder. It just comes across on the left side of my face as just a touch brighter. The Chanel didn't give me a brightening effect, but the finish of them, with something on my cheek here, the finish of them is very similar. I have been loving this Tom Ford powder. If you saw my first impressions video, you know I got carried away. This thing is, this thing is insane. And it better be for $95. The Chanel, I've used this a ton. This thing I wish would come in just a slightly lighter shade. This is the lightest. B10 is the lightest. And honestly, they could go down one more shade. That said, this powder doesn't look any different on my skin finished than the Tom Ford. For $35 less, you could not tell me by looking at me that this looks different on my right face as opposed to this on my left face. I don't think you need both. I do not need both. Speaking to myself here, I do not need both. I just think that they are lovely powders and I had to compare them. After being on my face for about two hours now, they're both wearing lovely over this Tom Ford Architecture Soft Matte Foundation. But for a soft matte, these look beautiful on my dry skin. I am dry skinned, fair, cool undertoned, and they work lovely. I hope you found this comparison helpful, and I hope if you're fair skinned like myself, you found that demonstration of the Fenty Beauty bacon cakes just as helpful everything on my face is linked down below if you click on those links to make a purchase i do earn a small commission so thank you so much for supporting my channel otherwise enjoy your day today because it's friday and you deserve to have a good friday bye guys